What we're going to do is we're going to finish up here talking about metals, nonmetals, and metalloids. And what we're going to do is kind of talk a little bit about fission and fusion. And I guess go ahead and talk a little bit about astronomy here when we talk about elements from stardust. Now, some vocabulary that we need to look at. Plasma. Plasma is actually a fourth state of matter. I know we talked about solids, liquids, and gases, but plasma is actually a fourth state of matter where electrons are knocked off of atoms. Now, the thing is, we talked about as temperatures go up, we said the particle speed was going to increase. The other thing that we said is as temperature rises, pressure is going to increase, which pressure we said was going to be this force per unit of area. What I want you doing is I want you thinking about the collisions that are going to occur at about 5,000 degrees Celsius. Those particles are going to be moving around extremely quick. So what I want to do is I want to, you know, again, looking, look at a substance where, again, let's say that it has five protons, and on the outside we've got two and three electrons. All of a sudden we've got something over here with its five protons. It's it's two electrons and it's three electrons and what's going to happen is, is these particles are going to collide with one another and what you might have over here at the end is you might have again notice the five protons but instead of having those three electrons on the outside you know this one might have one electron electron floating here and an electron floating here maybe here's the other one with its five protons you know again two electrons and maybe it has you know three electrons that are just floating around somewhere else what we're saying is those collisions are violent enough to actually knock particles away from that actual atom itself nuclear fusion is the process of atomic nuclei combining to form a larger nucleus. Again, we have two or more atoms that are colliding together that are getting the nuclei to combine to form a single larger nucleus. The sun, the fuel of the sun is going to be hydrogen. And what we're saying is when two hydrogen molecules collide, those nuclei combine and that single nucleus that's going to be formed is helium. Now again, all I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on the nucleus. I'm not going to look at the electrons and things like that. So we're going to have a hydrogen atom here with its one proton and again we'll just go ahead and have that electron out there. There's another hydrogen atom with its one proton and its one electron also. But what ends up happening is it's the nuclei that end up combining. So if I've got one proton in the first one and one proton in the second one, when they combine we're going to have two protons there and we'll say maybe one electron sticks and during that collision one of the electrons is going to end up being knocked off. But the thing is this was a hydrogen atom. This was a hydrogen atom. And again, two protons, if we go ahead and look at our periodic table, when we go ahead and look at a periodic table, the element that has two protons is going to be the helium atom. So what we're saying is one proton from hydrogen, one proton from the other hydrogen, those two nuclei combine together and what we have are two protons in the nucleus and the element that has two protons is going to end up being helium. So if we go ahead and continue, Let's go ahead and look at this one. It says, if two helium nuclei combine, what is the result? So let's go ahead and look at that. Again, this one I'll actually go ahead and forget about, the electrons. Okay, so there's, there is a nucleus there with its two protons. We've got our second helium atom with its two protons there. Again, helium here, helium here here but the thing is when they combine those two protons of each one are going to go together to form an element that has four protons in it the element that ends up having four protons find atomic number four atomic number four here is going to end up being beryllium so when two helium nuclei combine the resulting product is going to be a beryllium atom so the resulting atom that's going to form when two helium atoms combine is going to be a beryllium atom. Let's go ahead and look at a hydrogen atom and a helium atom and let's look at what is going to end up resulting here. So if we go ahead and look at hydrogen, hydrogen has its one proton. If we go ahead and add that to helium, helium has its two protons. So one proton and two protons is going to be a nucleus that has three protons. If we go ahead and look at the periodic table, the element that has three protons 
atomic number three is lithium. So the resulting atom there is going to be a lithium particle. Beryllium atom and a helium atom, and they fuse, what will the result be? So beryllium, when we look at the periodic table, beryllium has four protons. So beryllium, beryllium ends up having four protons. So beryllium, four protons. We've already talked about helium. Helium has two protons. And if we go ahead and add those together, the result is going to be six protons. Again, if we go to the periodic table and look, six protons is carbon. So the result of a beryllium and a helium atom is going to end up being the element with the nucleus of carbon. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to combine or fuse together a beryllium atom and a boron atom. Now this is going to be for extra credit, so I'm not actually having it up on the slide. So I want you to fuse a beryllium atom and a boron atom. And when you come to class tomorrow, on a scratch piece of paper, have your name on it and have the answer for the fusion of a beryllium atom and a boron atom for extra credit. Okay, so one more time. A beryllium atom is going to fuse with a boron atom. Bring that to me on a scratch piece of paper with your name on it for extra credit. Whenever nuclear fusion occurs, large amounts of energy are going to be released. This released energy, this is how we receive the heat from the sun to heat the earth up. This is how some communities are going to receive electricity. They have nuclear fusion reactors, and again, they're going to go through that conversion to convert that nuclear energy into electricity. With large amounts of energy being released, the particles are going to end up losing mass since the mass is going to be converted into energy. Uh, if you think of Einstein's famous equation, E equals mc squared, what we're saying is if we take mass and we get it moving fast enough, we can create energy. So with the energy that is released during fusion, mass is going to end up being lost. Now as a star ages, it becomes hotter. Also, as it becomes hotter, we're going to say it becomes more unstable. These stars have enough energy to produce some of our heavier elements. Like I said, the fuel of the sun is hydrogen. Hydrogen fusing together is helium. So we're talking about our two lightest elements on the periodic table. But again, on some of your hot stars, they are producing these heavier elements like magnesium and silicon. Now in your more massive stars and those that are completely really unstable, fusion is going to continue until that core is moving around iron. Now iron is a very dense element and to get fuse, fusion to occur you're going to have to have them moving at an extremely large rate to continue that. Now like I said this is very unstable and with that instability comes a supernova which is eventually going to be an unstable uh, star uh, that ends up breaking itself apart uh, during this process of fusion. So supernova is an explosion that breaks apart a massive star.